The final unit processor scheduling algorithm I'll be discussing is feedback. Now feedback is fairly complicated and warrants a bit of explanation before we demonstrate it, but it is similar to round robin in that processes execute for some amount of time and then once their time quantum expires they get kicked off in favor of another process. So in the simple form of the feedback algorithm we have a quantum that is simply some fixed number like one which is similar to what we saw with round robin. Now where feedback differs from round robin is that instead of maintaining a single queue we maintain multiple queues. So here is a ready queue and new processes enter at the back and come off of the front and they get on the processor and in round robin things run on the processor for a while and then they get off and they go back to the end of a line of this one queue. That is how round robin works but feedback has multiple wait queues. So for this algorithm we have separate queues. When a process first enters the system it gets in the initial queue and eventually it gets to run on the processor. If it is not finished yet it goes and waits on another queue. Processes in the higher queues always have priority over the processes in these lower queues. So new processes get to run first, whereas old processes keep running and then when they come off they go on to higher and higher queues. So the idea is that if you're taking a long time to run then you get pushed to worse and worse priority and only will get your turn once the short quick processes finish. Now there are some issues with starvation here especially if you have a small time quantum. So there is also a version of feedback in which the time quantum scales depending on which of these queues you're in. And so in this scheme the first queue would have an I of 0 and then this one would have an I of 1, an I of 2, I of 3, and so on. So what this means is that if you are in a queue that has a higher value of I you still have to wait for the processes that have a lower value of i, that are in a queue with a lower value of i, to give up the processor. They will have priority. But the processes in these queues up here, when they finally get to run, they get to run for longer. So let's demonstrate this using both a fixed quantum and a quantum that's a power of two that scales with the queue you're in. So I'll be demonstrating the two forms of feedback with this particular process arrival and service time sequence. So A arrives at time zero and has a service time of five. Now notice that the next process B arrives at time two. So A gets to run and the quantum is one. So A would normally be kicked off the processor but Recall that our convention is that if there are no other processes that can run, then the currently running process just stays there, doesn't actually leave the processor. And this is important because it affects the queue that A ends up in. So remember that when A entered the system, it was in the first of this sequence of queues. So A was in this queue here and then it went on the processor and it didn't go back into a different queue at this point. It simply stayed on the processor here and only when B arrived did A get kicked off and go to the next queue. So B showed up in that first queue. 
it immediately gets to run on the processor so it is running and it runs for a single quantum here and then here is the next peculiarity of how we will choose to model this but we will disallow any process that was forcibly kicked off the processor from immediately running again so B runs for one unit of time there it then must leave the processor because there is at least one other process waiting so it gets off and it goes here what's next well it's a so a will run next and then that moves a to the next queue b will run for a quantum of one and move to the next queue and this will repeat uh, until one of them finishes or another process shows up. So I'm going to go ahead and write down where C and D are showing up on this. So C is showing up at time 7. D will show up at 9. We'll keep that in mind as we execute going forward. But we're basically going to alternate back and forth between A and B. So A executes here and moves down a level. And then B executes. And then at this point a and B are in this queue all the way down there. C has just arrived here and because C is in this queue which has higher priority it gets to run next. So C gets on processor runs for one time unit here and then gets kicked off and goes here. Now, this is going to go back to our weird convention from before, but I said that no process which was just kicked off the processor is allowed to immediately run again. So even though C is in a queue which should allow it to run before A or B, it just got kicked off the processor, so we have to run something else. So we'll actually run A next. And at this point, A has actually reached its service time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A is done. And furthermore, D has just shown up. So D is here in this queue. And we're looking at all of these fresh. A just ran and, so, and is also gone. So that means that all of these are eligible to run. And so we pick the one that's in the top queue here which will be D and then D moves down to here next is C and moves down a queue then going from the top down D is the next one that gets to run then C again and note that D actually should have moved down to this queue a moment ago after it executed here. So D was here, C just executed and is now in the next queue here and D still has some time left to run so D gets to go again and D also gets moved down and now finally B gets to run again. So B had to wait for the other processes to move through the higher priority queues but it is now B's time again so B will execute here and because B's service time is 4 1, 2, 3, 4 it is done now and C will run and when C runs we go down yet another queue and it is now D's turn and D runs and that was the last unit of time needed for D 1, 2, 3, 4 its service time is 4 so D is gone and so at this point, when C goes onto the processor, it will simply stay there. There are no other processes around, so I don't have to move it from Q to Q anymore. It just goes on the processor. It runs for its remaining amount of time. And now all of them are done. And that is how feedback works with a fixed quantum. Now you could do the same thing with a quantum of two 
uh, or more, just keep in mind that it's fixed. Now, this is in contrast to feedback with a quantum of 2 to the i, where the amount of time you get to run depends on which queue you're coming from. And so that looks like this. On the side here, I've laid out all of the ready queues for doing feedback with Q2 to the i in advance. So these numbers are the values of i depicted in that quantum measure. So when a arrives at time 0, it goes into the queue, immediately comes off and is executed. And because b doesn't show up until time 2, it gets to run for two units even though a quantum of two raised to the zero is equal to one. This is when B shows up and gets in the queue. This causes A to be kicked off to go to the next queue and now it is B's turn to run. B comes off but because A is waiting B only runs for two to the I specifically two to the zero units which is only one. C and D have not shown up yet, although I will go ahead and write in when they'll arrive. So A gets to go now, but because A is in Q1, it runs for 2 to the 1 units, which is 2. Now A moves on to the next Q, and of course B should have actually gotten into this Q earlier when it came off the processor. It is B's turn now. B also gets to run for two units, and this is when C shows up. So B went off of this queue and moved to the next one, while C showed up here. C gets to run next for one unit, and then move up. Now despite the fact that C is in the queue with the lower number and would otherwise be able to go next, C was just on the processor, so we instead let a execute next. So A executes and it's in now um, the queue with the number 2. So it would get to run for 2 to the 2 units for 4, but that is more than A will need. Its service time is 5. It's already run for 4 units, so we just run for one additional unit and A is done. And now D shows up. So we'll add D here. So D actually goes next for one unit, and now it is C's turn to run for two units. Two to the one is two. D runs for two units. And now everything is at the same level again. But how many units left does each of these processes need to execute for? So B gets to run, but it only has a service time of four, so it only uses one of the remaining units. 1, 2, 3, 4, B is done. Now C can run, and C has already run for 1, 2, 3 units. 2 to the 2 is 4, so C runs 4 more units and completes. And then finally, D has run for 1, 2, 3 units. It has 1 left, so it comes off, it runs, and it is finished too. So although processes that have been in the system a long time still have to wait for new processes to run first, at least the processes that have been around for a while get to run for a longer period of time when they eventually do run. And so that is an advantage of this alternative feedback scheme.